now we're doing ankle inversion and eversion. And if we had gotten to the lecture I wanted to give today, we would be, have been told already that that is a movement between the calcaneus and the talus. Okay, so dorsiflexion plantar flexion happens between the tib fib bones and the talus. Then below that is the talus articulating with the calcaneus, and that's an inversion, eversion motion, okay? So what we have to do is have the patient sitting, and you can crouch down if you want to. I usually try to do it sitting in a stool. You're going to find the talus bone, which is going to be between your malleoli. So it's inside there, right, because the malleoli make kind of a concave surface and then the talus sits inside of there. So you're going for kind of right here where the talus articulates with the calcaneus ball underneath. Now you're gonna find those malleoli and then put your finger right in between them. That's your fulcrum, okay? The stationary arm is the tibial crest and you use the tibial tuberosity, which is a really easy to bony prominence right in the front just below the patella as your stationary arm. And then your movable arm is going to be lined up with the second metatarsal. So you can find that because your first metatarsal is gonna articulate with the big toe. Your second one's gonna go with the second toe. So you just find the second toe and then you can palpate the metatarsal, the long bone in the forefoot, all right? So you put that, line everything up. Now, the one thing that students forget is to get the ankle in neutral dorsiflexion, plantar flexion before doing inversion, eversion. Because if I do, if I allow her to go all the way with plantar flexion, she's gonna have a lot more movement than if I put her in neutral and try to isolate inversion okay and that's what we're trying to do here all right so how do you know they're exactly in neutral eye it okay you don't have to go and then measure and then they have to stay there while you come up here and find all your landmarks just make sure that they're they're not really dorsiflexing they're not really plantar flexing they're pretty much at a 90 degree angle you can kind of eye that can't you all right so then what you do is you have, I'm gonna ask you to just turn the sole of your foot towards me and go as far as you can, okay? Now, what happens is the goniometer tends to do this. So there's a big degree of error that can happen. If you don't stabilize your, and you can stop for a second so you get cramped, if you don't stabilize your fulcrum, okay? So watch how I do that, I'm holding, Keeping my movable arm going with the second toe. Okay, turn in. And I'm, I'm controlling it from going here with both of these hands. I'm keeping it right over that midpoint. Okay. So what I'm reading here is 40 degrees. What's normal inversion? 35. Okay, so she's got a little hyper mobility. We're gonna do the exact same thing for eversion. Bring her up to neutral, and notice this bends. So I'm actually able to go in the contours of the ankle. That's why it's flexible, right? So you don't have to hold it up here, that's what I'm saying. Push it down. Okay, and then turn the bottom of your foot out to the side. She's doing a little substitution. Did you guys catch that? She kind of wanted to do a little, get a little excessive. Okay, let's do it one more time. Actually, let's bring her back up to neutral. Okay, try it again. She does not have very much. She's got 10 degrees, which is probably why she was trying to compensate. What's normal? 15. Okay, so a lot of times you'll see joints that have hypermobility on one end in the same plane, they'll have hypomobility on the other end. So sometimes you'll see like internal rotation is really limited and external rotation is excessive. 
but the total range of motion is still the same. She's a perfect example because she had five degrees extra going in and lacked five degrees going into E version. But total range of motion, she's still within normal. So sometimes you see that, and that you don't worry about as much.